Hey guys, so yesterday I learned they are going to iron out over 65,000 years of Aboriginal culture from the school curriculum, particularly between the years of year 7 to year 10. I don't know what the conversion for that is in American terms. Regardless, this is a crucial part of the developmental stage. For them to target this area is very malicious. Anyway, to put it in a nutshell, so you don't have to read the articles. By the way, I have two articles opened up right now. One paints it as it is. The other one, the Sydney Morning Herald. Um, if you're an Australian and you have a decently sized brain and self-awareness, you'll know that a lot of our major tabloids are heavily biased. And to some extent, I would imagine that anyone who tries to write about both sides of the story get removed from these tabloids. They target a specific audience and they paint a certain narrative. Anyway, in essence, the Sydney Morning Herald is something you should read if you want to make yourself even stupider. Multiple other, other different perspectives if you actually want to see what's going on in the world. So in a nutshell, the New South Wales education system plans to remove 65,000 years of Aboriginal history from its high school curriculum, focusing instead on the period following the European colonization this change illuminates the teaching of ancient indigenous culture, knowledge and achievements, reducing the scope of Australia's history to a colonial narrative and potentially diminishing students' understanding and appreciation of Aboriginal heritage and identity. People are arguing that this decision undermines the reconciliation efforts and risks perpetuating a limited and biased view of Australia's past. So when I, when I discovered this yesterday, I, I felt my blood boil. That hasn't happened in that sort of way, I'm pretty sure since, was it the Julian Assange thing? You know when you see such a, such a huge amount of injustice just going by un, unscathed? It was that sort of blood boil. I'm not even Aboriginal as well. I really appreciate the infinite amount of perspectives that come from the infinite amount of cultures that exist throughout our current time and human history. And I say infinite because the way history works, the way it's going at the moment is a perfect example of how entire peoples can be eradicated from history. I also respect the culture a huge amount. Um, I've grown up with them since my wife is Aboriginal. How dare they? not only eradicate the people and the culture, but then go forward and utterly eradicate the history as well. Now, I'm, I'm speaking in very grand terms here because that's where it's heading. Because at a fundamental level, without the history of a people, way of living and culture being taught, the very existence of those people, way of living and culture is extinguished. As if conquering this land and its people wasn't enough they now need to go the extra step and literally burn, just fucking napalm strike the history as well. The colonization is still happening, yet it's happening so slowly and so discreetly that no one bats an eye. It's moments like these that push too far and the true intentions of those in power of these decisions seep through. I find it a little bit interesting because it is hypocritical of me to speak like this given my background is German and Italian. I'm as wog as they get, I suppose. I don't speak like a wog. Anyway, my mum does. Anyway, <laughs> I am not native to this land, but at the same time I am. I grew up here. I I've lived here my entire life. When I grew up, I learned about Aboriginals, not as much as I would have liked to, but when I was younger, I was intrigued by the various different avenues you could seek when wanting to learn about Aboriginal culture. My first crush was an Aboriginal girl as well. My wife is Aboriginal. Her family is Aboriginal. Sure, there is mixed blood. Funnily enough, that mixed blood was due to the stolen generation. That's just a nice way of saying, sort of, in other words, I'm not going to sugarcoat it whatsoever here, Aboriginals getting raped and new blood coming out without their consent. That's why there were white Aboriginals. Obviously, not in every case, I would imagine there were, were actually some decent human beings back then that actually fell in love with Aboriginals, etc. Anyway, but the Aboriginal people and the way of life 
will continue to live on in my wife and <laughs> that crush I had in high school and many other Aboriginals and by extension me as well and people who appreciate and respect and understand the intricacies of human beings. We're all fucking human. One of the most fascinating aspects of consciousness itself that I have learned comes from the Aboriginals. It's called dream time. Literally, they use the dream world uh, slash astral or whatever the fuck you want to call it to communicate with each other. It's not fantasy. It's fucking real. There have been studies and research on it. Other cultures have had similar things. That's beside the point, though. Also, if this is truly a democratic process, why wasn't I notified of this decision in a letter for a vote on it? and any of my family. Why did I have to find out about this through the bullshit ads that pop up on my phone? Purely by chance, because I, I never fucking look at them, and I try to block them at every single chance. The ancient philosopher Aristotle was quite the character with his views, I will say, <laughs> but he knew from the get-go there were issues with democracy, or should I say in this particular situation and time we're in, an oligarchy. I have not used that word before. I actually had to search it up. It's fascinating. An oligarchy, probably butchering the way it's said, is a form of government where power is held by a small group of individuals, typically the wealthy, elite, or a specific class, who control the decision-making and resources. Our democracy is... I usually say this with close friends and stuff, but I'm sick of hiding it. It's a disguise for something that is it's devolving into something else an oligarchy is probably the closest thing i can think of right now i would say it's a pseudo oligarchy melded with an aristocracy aristocracy fuck I'm, I'm having to try and pronounce words that i usually only read <laughs> a lot of us already know that democracy is not what we hoped it would be anyway the dream time is just one out of an infinite amount of aspects and lessons we can learn from the Aboriginal culture and their people. This feels like, as I stated before, them bringing out too big of a nail, thinking no one is looking. Because to, to be fair, over the years, our leaders have been slowly eradicating Aboriginal existence ever so slowly, thinking no one is noticing. And no one is noticing, and anyone who does notice is usually being fed information in the form of fear-mongering and psychological manipulation via these fucking media tabloids. Here's one of them. And it's feeding on people's disinterest in anything that isn't in front of them and can entertain their dopamine receptors. For instance, this article paints the entire situation. It's amazing what language can do if you can use it right. You really need to look at multiple perspectives. Never take a single perspective this is why if I say something, I don't want you to just disagree with me or agree, or, or agree with me. I want you to take in what I've said, go to other sources, compare it, combine everything together and come to your own unification of a new idea, then get back to me <laughs> or then make your decision. I know that's a lot of effort. It's almost as if we live in a world where that much effort is, in, is impossible to actually come by in a particular person. If it doesn't happen in five to 10 seconds, we click off it. What a nice evolution of society, eh? If this pisses you off, there are ways to voice your protest against this. There are multiple ways. One of the easiest ways I would imagine is just Twitter, um, is, is one. I can imagine some much more extreme examples. I'm not going to say them though. <laughs> the Aboriginal people, its history and culture will not fucking die. As much as us white men once it gone, it's not going to die. They can try to get rid of it as much as they want. As long as a lot of us who actually have some semblance of self-awareness left exist, it's not going to die. This is fucking disgusting and it's been happening very gradually without all of us not noticing. I am also one of those people who hasn't noticed because they haven't been hitting the nail as hard as they just did now. One more fascinating thing I noticed, by targeting a crucial temporal area in the developmental stage, you eradicate the very existence of a concept, or in this case, a people and their history. If you started to not teach um, younglings, I'm gonna use Jedi terms here, uh, <laughs> um, the idea of the force at around years seven to 10, the next generation is not going to take the force as seriously as it should. <laughs> And to some extent, people won't even believe it exists. And then you keep repeating that process. And over time, it gets completely eradicated. That just makes the next move even easier. Further down the track, since the next generation will not even know what is changing even more in regards to this topic. 
it's called a gradualistic process. I don't know if you've ever heard about the boiling the frog in the pot. It doesn't realize it's being boiled alive until it's too late. They do it so slowly, hoping no one will notice. And by the time you do, with big hits of the nail like this one, it's usually too late. Don't wait for the next large nail, because there might not be one. This is my form of protest. I have limitations, and this is my form of protest. Do your form of protest. Do something. One last thing. This is why you should never take history at face value. What we are taught is someone's story. His slash her story. History. That's the that's the joke there. I mean, it's not really just a joke. It's literally in the, the word. If you're being taught a history, remember that it's either a single person's version of history on what they want you to know or a single collective agreement on which part of that history is being taught to you. That's about it. Not much else here to say. Search it up for yourself. It is interesting. Um, it's also blood boiling as well. Thanks for watching. Ciao.